And uh, I've got to say, love the shirt. Well, I saw Jax and I thought, right, I've got to outdo it. It's on. <laughs> yeah. It's on. All right, so whoever's on next, all right, whoever's, whoever's coming down to be interviewed, try and beat the shirt, yeah. all right? <laughs> Hi, it's Johnny from Isaac and we are in the treehouse again for another episode of Isaac Chats. And today, guys, we have a very special episode because we are with my friend, agent and acting coach, Matt Zena. Matt Zena. That's my name. Matt really. Zena, how are we doing? <laughs> I'm all right, mate. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for coming down. Don't worry. So I'm much really for happy to down. be here. Yeah. Just for everybody at home, uh, before we take a deep dive in, just give everybody at home an idea of uh, who you are and uh, what you do. Right. Um, well... Let's go right back. I started off as a, a bit of a child actor, like yep. yourself, um, and kind of did that for a long, long time. Really kind of got back to what I really love doing, which is coaching. And I love acting coaching, and I always have done. Um, so I set up a company called The Oak School of Acting, which has gone from strength to strength. Um, been going quite a few years now. and I How many like years is it? Six, seven years now. Wow. So yeah, and... Um, I feel like we've been responsible for a lot of good actors that are coming through at the minute, supported them and um, got to had some real success stories. Um, um, and I'm the principal. That's also led on to other things, um, kind of dialect coaching with yep. BBC and ITV, kind of being an on-set acting coach and done so some really exciting, some exciting things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely amazing. And I just love it, yeah. love, love everything about it. Talk a little bit more Yorkshire School of Acting. Um, you're based all over Yorkshire. Yeah, we, we want we, the kind of business model. I mean, the business model that we're probably used to and, and kind of we've been involved with before is, you know, kind of having this hub and everyone comes as far as they may be able to mm. come. Um, but in a way, I kind of wanted to invert that business model, to kind of get out to different areas and and kind of, um, you know, because we've kind of got to York. Um, we go to Halifax, we go out and um, you know run these classes in different areas because yeah. there's no point in being called the Orchard School of Acting if you're just in Bradford. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that was always the plan, and it's it's worked incredibly well. Yes. And you know we kind of, we've, you know we, we we're able to cover such a big amount of space. But I mean, it's crazy because we've got people come from Coventry and down, you know, the southern reaches of the, yeah, the yeah. Sheffield, Nottingham. It's just crazy. We we get people come from all over, and, and obviously. You know, with the success of our organisation, you know, it's kind of been seen far and wide. So people are really pricking up their ears and, and travelling. What, what I really love about Yorkshire School of Acting as well is, you know, like um, we've been talking about when we went to a, a kids drama school. Yeah. But it offers that tuition for adults. Yeah. And this is rare to come by. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, there's other companies out there. Yeah. Um, it's a really good one. Yeah, there's absolutely. Yeah. Well, we had, um, this morning we had um, director David Crowley. In, oh, who right. also uh, now Peter Hunt passed on um, Act Up North to him. Yeah, yeah. Which we were discussing a little bit this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. The fantastic organisation. Yeah, really I, are, and, yeah, and like I said, I think it's great that YSA, Act for TV, Act Up North, um, it's kind of offering, it's offering that environment to be creative, to explore, to train to adults. And, and, and it's I so hard so. to come by, is that? It's that whole thing of. Especially when we left stage school when we were younger, there were people hanging about that were 17 and 18 who were feeling a little bit old, but they didn't want to let go of it. That's and right, eventually, yeah, yeah. they had to get let go of it. And back then, there was nothing. And that's it. They just literally let it go, didn't they? Yeah. yeah and never. And we. it's really nice, actually. We get people all the time kind of going, I had to drop it when I was 17, 18, but, you know, I really want to rekindle that fire. And I say, look, we, we can facilitate that. Yeah. And, you know, we... We have, uh, you know, um, success story like you, you remember Kerry, Kerry South. Yes. You know, she she kind of did that. She came back. She said, you know, we remember really good times. She went to stage eight four with us. Lovely girl. And she kind of went, oh, you know, but I really want to get back into it. She'd be really supportive. She comes to the classes and she goes, you know, this is really good. And such a success story. I mean, she's just been in in years on years. She got a first ever TV Excellent. role. She I saw it on Facebook. Did you see years it? And years, and I, was yeah. so, I was so pleased for her. Yeah, you know that's just from coming back and saying right, we can do this, and we kind of which she's been training. She's so, um, so into it and so dedicated, and 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 yeah, I was just so happy to make that phone call and say, look, you've got your first speaking role. Yeah, and and yeah, she she nailed it. She was brilliant. 
um, just just pr like you say, providing the facilities for for adults to be able to rekindle that yeah. love in yeah. being able to well, like we said at the beginning, express themselves yeah. and, and be in this industry mm. because it's never too late. No, it's it not. Isn't. It's not too late. And you know, it's funny. It's strange in it, but I find um, doing this with young people and children, and then going into adults. It's a very different game because um, I was talking about this the other week on an episode. I think yeah. um, when we when we become adults, we're really getting our own way. Yeah, <laughs> don't we? We do. We're getting our own way. We do. Um, and uh, and we have all these uh, preconceptions of ourselves and put these barriers up, and we kind of I think to get back in that room mm. and in front of other people that are just like you, alone, without picking up a script, yeah. you've already achieved something. <laughs> Katie, can you just listen for a minute? No. You listen. You're not leaving. Katie, please. I just need to go and figure some stuff out. Alright? No. This is not okay. This is bullshit. Oh, okay. Watch your language. Yeah. I want to start talking a little bit about a different aspect now of oh, uh, why I say. Yep. Um, you're an agent. Yes. So, yeah. I know there's going to be loads of people that are watching. Uh, there's going to be some of your students that are asking these questions. Like, mm. it's always been a big, big question mark in my mind. The whole agents world, you oh, know. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, how did, how did you find that transition of going from principal to yeah. now representing these actors on a professional front to casting directors and, and companies? It's a, it's, the thing is, it's a natural progression. It's organic, obviously actor that's yeah. to coach to principal and then agent yeah. now obviously the problem is you set up an organization and, and and we kind of talked about how you set it up and then suddenly you've, you've you think i've got some really talented guys here yeah so the natural progression is like look i'm gonna i'm gonna really have to fire them out mm. and into the into the industry so you know becoming agents obviously the practicalities of it you know setting up a, a with the spotlight and we kind of set up a, a deal with casting networks because they kind of came into the country around the same time so that we could have free profiles for the actors all very supportive spotlight and casting networks are incredibly supportive um but as you will know um when you you know i was an actor for about 20 years doing plugging away you know all sorts of stuff and you've seen a lot of these casting directors you know and there's that yeah there is that kind of like Remember me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm an agent now. <laughs> <laughs> They're either, oh no, oh, oh yeah, 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 but yeah. Um, and obviously, it's 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 a it's a transition into saying like, look, trust us, we've got some good yeah. talent. Um, and it's a slow process, but suddenly, you know, you send somebody in for an audition, for an audition that no one thinks that they're gonna get. Um, what was the first really big one? Um, I think I rem the best one, the, b the biggest one I remember was um, a lovely woman called Emma Crompton. A bit of a name check. She's um, she was a casting assistant for a big casting director in London. She was and she was casting Grimsby okay. with Sasha Brown Cohen. Yes. Film. And um, I remember her going, Sasha Brown Cohen, bless him. He, he, he's very creative, he's changing his mind, and so the casting director's like, oh, what do you actually need then? Oh. And so she rang me in a panic, you know, just out of the blue, because I'd obviously been messaging the casting directors and making things happen. And she kind of went, oh, we, we need these kids. He wants now He now wants his family, you know, yeah, his yeah. sons and stuff. I went, don't worry, just bob yourself on a train, come to Bradford, I'll meet you off the train, and I'll set up a casting session for you. You've got to do things like this, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. to really kind of get them to trust you. And so I've always kind of done that extra mile. And um, and she went, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> On a train, met her off the train. I'd, I'd literally rang around as many parents as I can. Mm. I said, look, if you want to invite from other organisations, get them here to Bradford, to Bradford and, and, and this this particular place, and and I'll make it all happen for you. I even got her an assistant, you know, and set up it. And, and um, bless, we had um, John John. A little little young lad. I've met John John. I've taught John John. Yeah, yeah I've met oh, John he's, John. he's a legend. Yeah, but he was seven at the time, seven or eight, and another lad called Gabriel who was about the same age, mm. and um, and a load load more. Zach Sutcliffe, who who you've who you've met as well, um, and she came and she put them all on tape, and she just came out going, "Wow, 
you know, like wow. Um, she, I've never seen a casting director do this, but um, she kind of came out and she was like, you've got to see this, you've got to see this, and she's running. She actually come to play back the wow. scene that they'd, that they'd done. And she just went, wow. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, she, she could not wait to send it off. Excellent. To, effectively, Sasha Baron Cohen. Um, and yeah, so in the end, um, in the end, out of uh, the whole country, um, f- we had three, three of our kids in absolute, in p- amazing parts. Oh, wow. In this Hollywood funded film, we had young lads from Bradford, you know, going to South Africa to film for weeks and weeks on end. Experiences that they'd never even dreamt of, yeah. you know? Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna let go of the bag and put your hands behind your back. I ain't letting go of shit! Yeah, you are. You're gonna fucking make me! Ah, what the fuck? You're gonna let go of the bag now? Can't fucking do that! Do what? Ah! So, um, let's go a little bit back to teaching again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's so, my bread and butter, honestly, yeah, genuinely. It's yeah. what I love most. And that's, and, and you know, what's great is kind of. Again, at the times that I have covered for you, always some lesson plan and a brief, uh, kind of like what you're looking at that week, and and I find that you do look at some really interesting stuff. What's your what's your methods behind your teaching? Um, really, um, we try and keep it kind of forever transient with kind of what's going on in the industry. Because um, a bit like yourself, luckily, um, I've managed to keep a hand in the industry, um, working say say like last year. Last year, was it last year? The year before? I kind of worked with, like, say, Cleo Barnard on Dark River, which was like a, uh, her kind of third fe- third feature. Um, I was working as, like, a dialect coach and involved in kind of the kind of a bit of production element and things. And so I was trying to keep within the industry and kind of see what's going on. And, and suddenly you work with a director like that, and she's talking about this kind of how she wants this real improvisational style to the performance. and. And so I'm, tr- I'm, I'm constantly trying to pick up on things like that and think, right, what what should I be teaching now? Yeah. What is it that directors want? What's going on on camera? What are you seeing? You know, suddenly when the money went out of it, you know, when the money dropped out of the kind of advertising we quite a few years ago, you know, with the c- economic crash and mm-hmm. stuff, and suddenly you saw kind of cert- the, the shift in, in the type of programs that were being made. Like, you know, that was it Wild at Heart or something yeah. that was being made in like Africa and suddenly <laughs> ITV were like, nope. Kill it. <laughs> Kill and it. Then, yeah. And then suddenly they were chucking money at like Happy Valley because yeah. it was like well written, gritty, but cheap to make, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Or Not cheap. filmed in London. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. You know, filmed well, around here, yeah, you know. Yeah. And suddenly, you know, I think as, a, as, a, as an acting coach, you've got to be really transient in what you teach and mm. understand, you know, because I think there's some coaches still teaching what they were taught yeah. 10 years ago, at, maybe at uni or somewhere. Mm. And I don't think you can do that because this industry changes every year. You've, you've noticed this, I've noticed this. You know, the directors want different styles of performance. Yeah. There's different styles of shows being made. Yeah. You, you, you know, you can, you can kind of see the styles of performances that are coming in, you know, I watched that Shane Meadows, The Virtues the other day, that kind of improvisational, um, kind of long form um, feel to it. Mm. And you just think, what am I preparing my actors for? Yeah. Am I preparing them for, you know, a, d- a degree in performing arts or am I really trying to prepare them to be an actor for this industry? For today. For today. Yeah. And for tomorrow as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. you know? And so the things that I'm teaching um, really fall in line with that, and but as well as that, you've got to look around the kind of actor as well. So, you know, we're seeing this massive shift towards self-taping. Yeah, self-taping, and it, it's so important. It's huge, like so, yeah. so important. It's huge, and and, and there there's a real art that. form. There is to it. There, there really, really is. is. Like, there and really I think is. I think if you can figure it out, like, well, I I think I think if if there's anything, and I think I've fallen into this category so I mean you know and maybe all actors have but we can be lazy can't we you know and I don't think that self-taping I think because it's so important that is not that is not the time to be lazy this is the time to really really understand that this is the future and rather than falling behind get ahead yeah and um i think you recognized that a long time ago i think i love the story about you and phil doing the um, you <laughs> the know the nest cof- cafe the one, nest cafe one <laughs> yeah. you know but but you never had an audition yeah you know which is fantastic 
Hi, everyone. If you don't know my name, please sit down. Kerry, who I was talking about earlier, our friend, and, and you know, she's just done a fantastic self tape. She literally did a music video, you know? And everyone's got, everyone's got HD on the phone. Yeah. There's just no excuses. Yeah. Everyone's got HD on the phone. You can even, you can splice stuff up. Um, for free of charge. For free of charge. Yeah. It's just about being creative and yeah. just putting the time and rather than just going, oh no, it's a self tape. No. And oh. I, I'll be honest, I used to think that. I, I did. used to think that. I was like, yeah. get me in the room. Yep. Let me meet people. Let me do my thing. Let me do my thing. Yeah. Um, and it took me so long to, and, and I think I only started to understand it externally. And I only realised that doing fills on other people. Yeah. yeah. And starting to realise, hmm. If you get creative with it, if you get yeah. creative, I mean, you know, um, you could you can do so many things. And I think they enjoy that as well. You know, I think, I think, I think when they get a self-tape, they don't just want to see. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. why not get creative? Yeah. Why not do the scene and, yeah. and do something something with it yeah. to make you stand out? Um, so yeah, we try to support think support actors around the industry as well and, and getting them to understand the future of it. And I'm constantly, constantly kind of trying to um, see into the future mm. and try and get ahead because I think um, I think like I say, it's it's so important because it's. I mean, it's going to change in the next five years. I mean, terrestrial TV, moving online, and, yeah. and understanding where where we've got to position ourselves, yeah. not just as actors, but as an agency yeah. as well, you know, where, yeah. where where we've got to position ourselves to take ourselves into the future. Uh, um, who, who was the actor? Yeah, the actor that played Superman. Uh, Reeves, I think, Christopher Reeves. Reeves, Reeves was my dad, you know, just an ordinary guy who was just doing his job, but I am the one who went and decided to go and make him everything else, you know, yeah, yeah. So, it's funny that you were talking, Matt, about, um, you know, saying you have no right yeah, no, it's, in Bradford yeah, and yeah. to be... Uh, you know, kind of like to be so far away from the capital and taking kids from estates where these opportunities aren't usually uh, available, available yeah, yeah. and given to them. Uh, and these kids landing great parts, getting great tuition, yeah, getting great actor guests in. But things are really changing now. Um, and obviously you know this, but um, now, at the minute, I think 33% of all television is made regional. Yeah. Um, but that has to go up to 50% in the next three years. By law. By law. Um, which is great because it's it's spreading it out, it's getting out of the capital. It's so important. Yeah. Honestly, I've always believed this. Yeah. I've always believed this. It is. Massively. I mean, we were quite lucky. We were lucky because we had Yorkshire Television. Mm. You know, and, and you know, we'd regularly audition for was it Heartbeat yeah. and Where the Heart Is and, you know, and, and it, 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 was in, it was good. Yeah. But Yorkshire Television, you know, at one point only got down to just making Emmerdale, mm. you know, and there wasn't that for the kind of you know, kids we were bringing through. Yeah. So it became London centric again, really. Yeah. Um, but that's so important, and and I suppose yeah, that I suppose from what I said earlier about you know we've no right mm. and we've had to kind of fight, and it is a struggle. Yeah. But I suppose in a way that is a bit defeatist, and and the fact is is we've just talked about forecasting, and it's I suppose it's good we can have these conversations, and we we constantly do, but um, that's exciting. Mm. It really is exciting. And not too soon. Yeah. Not too soon. Not too soon. Not too soon at all. Because it, it, I think everything's cyclical in this industry. Yeah. Always has been. Yeah. It's really strange when you study it, you know. Um, and I think, you know, we had we did kind of have regional TV. We had like Yorkshire TV, Granada, and it was kind of like, <laughs> you know, yeah. we, we did get the opportunities yeah. in a way. Um, we didn't really get the kind of London opportunities, yeah, yeah. but we got the kind of regional. and. And it seems to have gone away, and, and it's kind of coming back. Yeah, with a vengeance. With a vengeance. Yeah. You know. And do you know what? Just it's, it's just an interesting little um, view that I've, I kind of have. And you know, kind of this industry started off in kind of America in the studios. You know, Warner Brothers, or you'd and and they'd sign up actors to different um, you know studios. Ah. And we're talking about being cyclical. 
isn't this kind of like online, you know, Netflix and the site, isn't it weird how yeah. it's so cyclical? Because in a way, they're kind of doing exactly the same thing. They're signing up actors to Netflix or yeah, Amazon yeah. Prime, like on retainers. And yeah. it's like, the whole industry just seems to go round and, and round, round. And yeah. you kind of start to see really real patterns. And yeah. it's such an interesting thing. But I think um, the more that we can really spread around the opportunities, I think Channel 4 coming to Leeds is a, is a massive thing. Yeah. And it, it's going to really stir it up because we think, you know, like we're thinking from a level of, you know, it's going to affect the actors, it's going to affect us crew, it's going to affect agencies, it's going to affect all this, but it's going to affect the full country because the tint of entertainment is going to change. You're That's, going to start to yeah. really see a different breath of entertainment. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I think there's such, I mean, look at the backdrop you've got here, you know, just your studio. I mean, oh. There is no nowhere more beautiful than Yorkshire. Yeah, you know? and um, and like Gentleman Jack. Yeah, just the way that Sally Wainwright just writes for well, yeah, round here the, really. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and she uses she uses it as a backdrop, and you couldn't get this in London. No, you couldn't. You know, and, and it adds to the story. It adds to the um, and I was speaking to there's a guy called David Martin at um, in Bradford. And he runs Bradford City of Film, which is like a UNESCO funded um, concept, which was basically, they call it Bradford was the first city of film. Mm. Now, all, all, what that meant really was, it was just to encourage people to film there. Mm. Because, um, and because what that does is it boosts the local economy. So if you think about it, um, if s somewhere comes to film in Bradford, they need catering, they need actors, you yeah. know. The amount, you know, the amount of um, people that say, "Look, we're looking for featured, featured extras," or you know, even roles and things like that. You know, they'll, they'll come to me because Bradford City Film will pass them on, um, and it just boosts the local economy. Yeah, and bo I suppose just boosts the kind of excitement in the city yeah. and and people kind of thinking, right? Well, that's been filmed just there. You know, yeah. it is. It does happen here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be an actor. I could be a yeah. producer. I could be a director. Don't feel like a million miles away. Exactly. That's yeah. it. That's exactly yeah. it. it. Don't feel like something that goes on in another world. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it literally is another world. Like I've been to some classes, and you know, like you walk in and you say, "Sorry, I'm late, guys. I'm, I've just come back from London." Yeah. Kids are like, "Whoa, London? You've been to London?" Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Like I was there two hours ago. I'd never been. Yeah. A million miles away to them. Mm. And it's that whole thing of. And again, I've, I've got no against London. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like we just yeah, like, exactly. and, and, and. I hate London. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I support Tottenham, but <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, for yeah. this industry, yeah, that's what I mean. It's just I think it's just really nice to actors. share the wealth. That's exactly it. It's nice to share. Are the we wealth. socialists underneath? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. It, yeah. But it's true. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Because I suppose you know we've we've seen it from both angles. We've kind of been a frustrated northern actor. You know, yeah. having to buy train tickets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> ouch. Ouch, big um, time, especially now. Exactly, and 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 I suppose in a way we've we've been a coach and and try to get people to re you know to have aspirations and things like that, and mm. and them thinking, well, but it's London. Well, no, this this industry isn't just London. Yeah. Um. I think as well as that though, the problem, as another problem that's kind of arisen is is. You've, you kind of suddenly it's like right okay let's make a production Sally Wainwright don't do this you know but so I think other production companies do it's like right let's make something gritty cool you know gripping hard hitting and let's make it in Halifax or Bradford or you know yeah. up north and then what do they do you know parachute a load of actors in yeah. from London that's exactly and then it, get yeah. someone like me to teach them to do a Yorkshire accent and you think yeah you know like Act, you know, act, the acting needs to be spread around as well. Yeah, yeah, that'd you know be I mean? nice. Yeah, 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 yeah that'd yeah. be nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I suppose that's just. I suppose Rome isn't made in a day. Yeah, there's a you know there's a lot of um, you know we've there's a lot of organic growth and and kind of getting things to change and it'll the wheels turning. Yeah, and um, and moving and fast. It is exciting. It is, yeah, it is, and it is yeah, moving it is fast. It's it like you said, these barriers are slowly getting broken down. Um, and opportunities are there. Yeah, and, and it could important. not be a more exciting time. I've, yeah. I, I, I've I've heard people say that all my life since I've been a kid. 
you know, again, been been at stage as a young un and telling your parents, you know, like there's never been a more exciting time. And it's been true because it has gone like that. But I feel in the last year, mm. it's yeah. had a really, really big influx. Definitely. No, I agree. It's, it is exciting. Matt, I think that's about it, mate. You have been absolutely amazing. It's been a really good chinwag. I've chin really wag. enjoyed yeah, it. It's been really a really good chinwag. And it's always good to have a chat yeah. with you anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll be doing things in the future. Always. Um, and you know, for the people at home, they can check out some of your clients who worked with us doing some show reels. I'm Definitely. sure we'll show some in between the interview. Yeah, do it. All right. I Thank love you it. so much, man. You're amazing. Cheers, man. Good fun. Cheers. Spot on. And that's it for another episode of Isaac Chats. If you want to check out more episodes just like this one, just head over to www.isaacwho.com. But for now, from me and Matt, that's about it. See you later. Ta-ra. <laughs>